if you're not shipping or changing in any capacity, or if you felt one way before coming on the cruise and you left the same way, that was your decision to be consistent with that feeling. Do I begin? I see the hate, they don't wanna see me win. Bank the pilots, I got more coming in. Top down, put the money in a win. Welcome to No Holds Barred featuring Candace Barr. I'm your co host, Chris Hines. Let's get into it. So I'm really excited to do this show today. It's the first show I've done since I've been back from my much needed vacation. Yeah. Um, I wanted to talk about it because there's so much to talk about from this vacation. So I actually, when I was on vacation, I did a Instagram live about um, traveling or going on vacation as a solo female. And so many of my girlfriends or so many people that follow me had reached out to me and were like, oh my God, um, you're so, you know, you're so brave. I went on a cruise. I went on a nine day cruise um, to Hawaii and they're like, oh my God, you're so brave to do that. I always want to do that. Or I wish I could do that. And it, I, I know it was a compliment, but I kind of like looked at it like the word brave, like really bothered me because I'm like, what's happening on the ship that is so terrifying? <laughs> I, I don't know. Or maybe it's the thought of just like being in the in the open water. I, I have no idea. That, that's I think a- it's the thought of just being alone. I don't think it's the location issue. I think it's an alone, alone issue. Yeah. I mean... It, <laughs> I, I don't see, I mean, like a cruise, there's just so much to do. You have like, you're good, you know, the views are going to be beautiful. You have so much to eat and you have, and, but I, I guess really the only thing that's stopping them is themselves at this point. I think it's, um, I'm going to call it a codependency problem. Um, yeah. And you know, when people are alone, like when you're alone, I, I'm someone who loves to be alone. I'm alone a lot. I need a lot of alone time to recharge and to get downloads. And that's what I need for myself. But I think a lot of lady, ladies in particular, but men have this problem too. Like it's a lot of codependency. They don't know what to do with themselves that they're alone. Um, they don't feel safe if they're alone sometimes. So I think it's just really interesting because, you know, a lot of people seem to be really codependent on their partner, their spouse, or, you know, they just feel unsafe if they're alone. And that usually stems from childhood stuff that are, it's unresolved. Or people, you know, when you're alone, you're you you're with yourself. So you're with your own thoughts, feelings, and emotions. And some people they they find that terrifying. So I just don't know. Yeah, I guess I mean I didn't even think about it that way. Uh the fact that, you know, you're alone with your thoughts. Uh some people I guess wouldn't enjoy that. I don't I mean, honestly, like I can see like for example, when we came out to uh, Miami to film, you know, I was traveling by myself. I it didn't bother me any. Um but I, I can understand why some people, I guess, wouldn't enjoy that. But I, my question is, why limit yourself? You know, why are you, why are you putting these limits on what you can do and what you can't do? I mean, you have all this potential, but just being like, oh, I can't do that because I'm, you know, oh, I'm by myself. I can't do that. Like, yeah, oh, it's like I, I'm like I, I booked it, and like someone may come with me, someone may not. But I, regardless, I'm going anyway. Yes, and. So it was an, anyone who like follows me or knows me knows I'm a huge person that's into Abraham Hicks teachings. Um, I would say she's like a spiritual guide, I think I would call her. Um, But I've been listening to her for years. She's been around for 40 plus years. And she actually was doing her workshop on the cruise. So I was like, I love cruises. I love Abraham Hicks. It's my two favorite things in the world. (laughs) How could it get any better? Yeah. (laughs) So, and I, you know, I, I'm fine by myself. I'm like, what's going to happen on a cruise ship that, that I can't handle? Nothing. Nothing's going to happen that I can't handle anywhere. So I feel very safe in my body. And I feel very safe, like, in with myself. So I think that might be a difference of, of that, of that mentality, maybe. But right. when I went on the ship, because uh, half the ship was, most of the ship was Abraham workshop people, but uh-huh. some of the ship was not. Um, and I met a lot of people at a lot of ladies at the workshop. Actually, they came alone as well. So it wasn't it wasn't just me. <laughs> so. 
I guess it's just like, I don't know why it's such a foreign concept for some people. I don't know. And maybe because I'm so, I, I travel a lot for work myself and I've been doing that for years. So maybe I'm just very used to it. And I also travel outside the country myself. Like, you know, you're going to, you're going to be okay. It's going to be okay. That's, um. <laughs> goes back to like, you know, if you are constantly assuming that something bad is going to happen or you're constantly like, totally. oh, then, then you will see bad things. Then, you know what I mean? You'll start noticing that bad stuff. But if you are just thinking, you know, I'm going to have a great time. I yeah. can't wait X, Y, and Z. I can't wait. Yeah. Whatever, you know, you, you got to think of it that way because, you know, back to the manifesting and everything, it's like, oh, are, do you want to manifest what's good for you? Or do you want to manifest stuff that's, you know, uh, bad, you know, or like fear? I would also look, like, I look at things like new things, or new experiences like exciting. And I think some people might translate exciting for them into like terrifying. So like, (laughs) like, I don't know what what to expect. I never know the itinerary of things. I never know the details of things. Just get me to the thing and I'll figure it out. Like, I don't, I don't need the the minutia of it all. So I'm like, I just want to go on this cruise. Like I'm going to go to this workshop and uh, I don't, my thought process i'm like i don't care if i'm on my balcony on in my room the whole time like looking at the water and the stars and the moon and the sun like i think that's a great vacation that's like my ideal situation (laughs) so and like meeting other people like i happen to meet other people but like if i didn't it wouldn't have changed the outcome of the trip well that's because you're letting you decide what the outcome is you have decided you were going to have a good time so you did yeah Exactly. That's and it goes to you know your thoughts become things. So you can't say like oh, I'm going to be worrying about this trip or oh, right. uh, you know this and that. Well, right. You're going to only notice the bad things or you know inconveniences. But totally. But I like let's go into like I had a great time. Like I said, we went. So we had a we left from Canada actually. So I traveled up to Canada, and we went to um, Hawaii. We were on the water i think for four or five days wow. so for four or five days you're just seeing water you're not seeing any land whatsoever and that's my favorite part like if i if we had a cruise to nowhere i'd sign up like <laughs> I, <laughs> I would totally do it and i don't care where we are like we could literally be doing circles like i don't care where we're, what we're doing i just love seeing just vast ocean and it was really cool because um you know they they have a spa on the ship they have everything on the ship that you'd have in normal life they have like seven or eight different restaurants then they have a 24-hour huge buffet so like you'll never be i mean i gained literally gained 10 pounds on the trip like quite literally (laughs) so (laughs) like sometimes you know you just gotta enjoy yourself (laughs) Okay, they did have a gym on the ship, like a really nice gym. I did use that maybe three times out of the nine days. And it was interesting being on the treadmill, like on the water, because you <laughs> do feel that. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's a fine yeah. trip. Um, what was it? So, and then uh, there's just so much. Like there's there's so much to do. They even had a library. They had a like a internet cafe. They had a, a regular cafe. I mean, like you're never going to go hungry. That's for sure. Wow. They even had, that wasn't enough food. Like the restaurant and the buffet, they even had food, room service if you didn't want to be around anybody. Um, that's always fun. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, they had, I mean, they, of course, they had bars everywhere. I think they had like seven or eight bars. Um, <laughs> <throughout the trip. laughs> and you can get drink, you can get drink packages. <laughs> You always do that. That's like the thing, you know. They, yeah. That's how you get in trouble because they you, want you well fed and they want you, you know, really drunk. So, <laughs> like a recipe for a good time. <laughs> yeah, they had a they had a casino on the ship. They had a, a nightclub. Wow. Um, I mean, there's literally nothing in normal life that they didn't have on the ship. A city on the water, like totally, lit. totally. Um, and so I just what did I do? You know, there was a. At the very top, in the very corner, there was a bar area that's the one place you could smoke. So, and they did have cigars. Nice. So I smoked a few cigars. And then um, when we did go to Kona, I bought like a bunch of like mini flavored cigars that were really nice. I still have some. Those and are- I just like, I just, 
had a good time. Like I did every spa treatment they had. Yes. Um, yes. Not the same day, but like throughout. Oh, and I was, I was going to say, the day I got my nails done on the ship, I was, she was doing my nails, really nice lady. I was looking outside on the water because this was one of the days it was like, you know, on the water day. And I was like, oh, in my head, I'm like thinking, I'm like, oh, I'd love to see a dolphin. No joke. Two minutes later, 30 dolphins. Oh, wow. Just 30 like dolphins. Alongside the boat? Oh, that's awesome. Like the, the location that I was looking at, at, and everyone in this, in the nail salon area was like, Oh my, even the workers were like, oh my God, look at all those dolphins. I was like, you're welcome. <laughs> you're like, I was thinking about that. <laughs> immediately. immediately. Yeah. Um, and then I didn't see any dolphins the rest of the trip. Oh, damn. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you got, you filled the quota. <laughs> I was like, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then it was just such a great time. I think when you go into things with no expectations, you probably get the best results. Absolutely. I mean, you know, you that way you don't you don't know what's going to happen. It, it's like a surprise. It, it's and I don't know. I feel like that leads it to something better. Like you know, like who knows? Eh, a surprise. I I feel like nine out of ten times it's always good. <laughs> yeah, but if you don't go, you don't know. You'll never know. You'll never know. That is. So you guys can pull that for the uh, the little clip. Um, no, 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 no. If you don't go, you don't know. So you don't know what's going to shake out here. So I met a bunch of, I met a bunch of people. And actually, I think like three or four of them will be coming to our women of achievement event. Nice. Yes. And like, there was people from around the world that came to this cruise. Like I met a couple from England, a couple of people from, a lot of people from Ireland was there, Scotland, Australia, they came from everywhere. They were just there for, for the two things yeah. like and Esther and the cruise. <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, and everyone, you know, you with everything, you're going to get what you get out of it, right? So a couple days, you know, we had to ourselves and then a few few days was the workshop. And if anyone knows anything about Abraham Hicks, again, I've been following her forever. I've been to like four of her workshops in person on land. Um, and this workshop, Every other workshop, you know, I always like raise my hand, like want, want to get picked to go on stage and ask a question. That's how it works. Um, and this workshop was different. So I used to like, you know, think in my head, like, oh, I hope Esther picks me or whatever. This time I was getting ready and I'm glad I got ready because I almost didn't. Thank God. And <laughs> I was gonna, no oh. makeup and like almost like pajamas. And like, thank God. I didn't do that. Like something was like, no, you, you should get ready for this. So I put my face on, I could put like, you know, proper clothes on and something in me was like, instead of like, I want Esther to pick me because she picks you energetically, not just because you're raising your hand. And I'll explain that in a second. Um, I said, can you please help me put, help put me in the vibration of Abraham? Uh. They asked, I asked a different question. Yeah, and then immediately I felt like very different. So then I just went like I went down there. I was in line. The theater was filling up, like the rows were filling up as we we're walking in, and then something was like go into this row. So I went to this row. Nobody else was in that row yet. I sat right in the middle, like in, immediately, like like right. eye to eye to yeah. eye with Esther. I was probably like seven rows back. Wow, and we're like. 15 20 minutes nobody it was filling up nobody was sitting in my row it's a completely open row there's like 40 seats available to my left and to my right then it started filling up and the lady next the, the lady sat next to me her and i started talking and then i just something she asked me something and i said i said she's gonna pick me today and then the event started it was day two of the event the event started she said, I'm ready. You know, everybody raises their hand. Like some people are like standing on their chairs. Like it's, it's people will wait three hours before they open the doors to sit in the front row. So she doesn't care where you're sitting. Like she'll pick you energy. Like she'll people, she'll pick people like in the back, like top back, back. Oh, like, yeah. yeah, it's, it's not because you're just conveniently there. <laughs> so That's crazy. I, I, yes. So, and I remember like, I, I raised my hand and like, 
I, I just, I just knew, like I knew she was going to call, like the lady in front of me was like standing on her chair and she's like, I mean, she's like you. And I stood up and then three other people in front of me stood up and then she'll go, no, 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 you. And I knew it was me. So I was already on my way out the row. I was in the middle of the row. So I go on, so I go on stage and it was crazy because, um, like I, like I said, I've been to many Abraham events before. I go on stage, like to go sit down, and like people were like, "Yeah," like going for it, like losing their shit. And I can't wait to get this recording because you're gonna hear it. Yes. And every other, like it ha- doesn't, it doesn't happen. Like this doesn't happen. Like I've been there, it doesn't happen. So I'm like, I was like, <laughs> yeah. And the energy, everybody was just so excited. Yeah. Believing before seeing. A new book by Candace Barr, teaching you how to believe into existence. Available now for pre-order. And then you're sitting down, so you're facing her and she's facing the audience, which I think takes like any nervousness away if somebody doesn't like talking in front of crowds or something. Uh, That's nice. Um, Well, that doesn't bother you. (laughs) You know, I actually don't, I'm used to it, but I don't love it. Okay. Um, Okay. (laughs) <laughs> yeah like no. i'll do it if no. i have to uh but i don't love it so and there was about i would say 1200 1300 people in that room and you're filled. yeah filled. yes yeah so then you know my main objective to get called was for always was for sure to thank her because my life had changed and has changed so dramatically like i can't even list how many things change since listening to her And then I wanted, I had so many questions I wanted to ask. Um, And then when you get there, you have to, like, you're, you're sitting with infinite intelligence. You're not sitting with a human. Oh, how did you? I, you are like, I, my experience was like, you're in a, you're kind of in a trance. So I don't remember what she said to me at all, which is why they have recordings because you don't, most people don't remember. Like, I couldn't tell you what she said to me. Um, so I was looking, I'm looking at her. So I was wearing a black, my black hat. Yes. I was jumping her. I was wearing a black hat. And she's like, can you lift your hat a little so we can see your eyes? So I lifted my hat. Like, I'll do whatever you want. I'll lift my, I lift my hat a little. And she's like, okay. So you're looking at her. And I was like, you know, I've been to many of your workshops in the past. This is my fifth one. And I really want to thank you for helping like change my life so dramatically. And she's like, well, it really wasn't us. It was you. You're, you're just open to receiving what you should be receiving. And I said, well, you helped with that. So thank you. So I got that out. And then <laughs> yes. I accomplished that. And then all I could get out, the I couldn't even think. Like it wasn't from nervousness. It's like I literally couldn't use my brain. Like, like the trance, like you said. I couldn't use my brain. So all I all I could say was, what's next? And thank God, like she ran with that. Like she ran 20 minutes on on that so and when she's speaking she's not always speaking to you sometimes she's you're asking a question and she's speaking for the audience as a collect as a collective of what they need to hear so it's really interesting and like when i got off stage um i went to go sit back down in my chair and like i was on a high for like probably like an hour like even watching her watching her picking other people like I couldn't tell you what she was saying to them either. Yeah, you're just like like levitating almost, Completely. like and like really every like the because she had light like lights on stage, all the lights like her and the lights were like blurred as one. I and it, like I remember just feeling and I feel like this anyway usually, but I remember really feeling like like knowing like I can do anything, yes. like at a terrifying level. <laughs> yes really it's i don't know everyone else's i'm sure everyone else has a very different experience but that was my experience so i knew i knew in my room before the event i was going to get i'm getting picked and like it just happened because like my vibration was at the same vibration of abraham so it aligned so it's really interesting how that works um and i've really just been on a high ever since really yes hey (laughs) (laughs) 
it was such a great workshop I and mean, there was so much value and so much information like everyone in the workshops like really on a high it's not like um it's not like culty and it's not like kind of religiousy it's like really just uh because you are on a cruise ship and you know you only have like four or five channels for tv because they want you to be out of your room spending money yeah. and um you know your cell phone really doesn't work not really so you are pretty disconnected from like regular world and it was quite nice because you don't have the incredible distraction of like the news and the problems and the bullshit and whatever else social media and whatever else is going on you're, you're really in your own bubble so you really get to disconnect and like it really be like harmonious and joyous and like actually quite happy and calm mm. so my only point it's very long winded and it's not really a conversation with chris <laughs> just talking about my experience no um, i won't hear about it and the viewers will too because who knows maybe they might go on one of the cruises next and see I you think i people should go on i already signed up for the next one so um it just it was just quite nice and like you really it's so necessary to really detach because i i've been you know i travel and i've been on vacations before but like not really vacations because i really didn't turn off or detach and like, it was probably much more needed than I thought it was. So it was just really great. But um, great. I would suggest if anyone, like if anyone, cause Abraham or Esther, you know, she's again, she's been doing it for a long time. She was on Oprah. She was going to be in the secret, but that was a whole business side of that that didn't go through. There was a couple of things outside of the workshop. The workshop was so great. And I got so much from that, but I was going to say everyone, it's so interesting because everyone translates things differently. Like you can get the same information and take it differently. And something, I overheard something and I remember thinking, Oh, even like Abraham, Esther Hicks, you know, it is a business. Um, even she has like clients that are, could be like issues or problems. Like even her, Hey, you know, I, it goes up at every level. I'm sure. I'm I, sure absolutely like i'm like oh it's so like i i realize it's a it's clearly a business like she does have to get paid for what she does um which is fine with me but like i just find that so i'm like this person is like their job is like giving you infinite intelligence love and light like they're really fantastic and like still people choose to have their own experience with things and not seeing things for what they are it, I, think it's, I think it's fascinating i think it definitely takes a uh you know like not just like oh being open being perceptive you know mm -hmm. and really like like she said to you it was all you were open to it you were open mm -hmm. to it. Uh, and uh i mean a lot of us aren't you know nobody like it goes back to you know traveling alone or like trying new things it's like trying you have to be open to it you have to be willing to go out of your comfort zone to experience all those exciting things that you've been like wanting yeah i i went i went on there i'm like the only thing that i really want to get at this is like some transformation whatever that looks like i don't really care what that is but some sort of transformation like i really i got overly what i wanted i guess but you know some people i get i just i just think it's so interesting it's like it's such a light space or I, I look at it as such a light space to be in. And if someone's like unhappy or complaining, like you're really um, dedicated to being in that feeling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, because everybody else is, uh, you know, feeling good. Yeah, we're all like on a different vibe. And like, you're just deciding not to, yeah. not to change, not to shift. I mean, if you're not, in my mind, if you're not shifting, you're changing in any capacity. Or if you felt one way before coming on the cruise and you left, the same way that was your decision to be consistent with that feeling yes you chose not to to learn it or take anything from it you decided mm -hmm. that, yep you gotta be willing you gotta be willing yeah. but, but i had a great time i i had a great time um uh, first we went to hilo which we had an awesome um tour guide it's so sweet so nice he made me a hat made of banana leaves which i did take home ah. um <laughs> But Hilo, it rains a lot there, actually. So we did go see an active volcano. Um, and it, it had erupted like two weeks before we were there. 
yeah, it's, it's a very active volcano. Um, we saw like there's a rainbow waterfall, like it's really great Hilo. I'm good with Hilo. Like that was a nice experience, but I don't need to go back to Hilo. Then we went to Kona, which is where the coffee comes from. And Kona was really great. I liked Kona a lot. And then we went to Honolulu, which I've been to Honolulu before. Honolulu is really fantastic. That's wow. more of a tourist area. Um, but it's still like Hawaii just has such a great energy there. Um, definitely a lot of vortexes. Like I love the history of Hawaii, like the old, the Kings and all that stuff. So I just can't say enough good things about it. So I am very appreciative that I was able to go and I appreciate it for you guys. You, you guys held down the fort while I was gone. Not a problem. Hey, you know, we, we keep it rocking and rolling, uh, but yeah, you know, like, we're, we're, not, uh, we're not doctors. We're not doing brain surgery. It's going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Nobody's life is in jeopardy. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be all right. You guys did a great job. I didn't hear any complaints, so that's good. But I didn't expect to. Um, it was just such a great time. Huh? <laughs> I said, that's always the plan. Keep it that way. Yeah. <laughs> no, no complaints. As long as I don't get complaints. Um, yeah, just such a great time. Like So anyway, to wrap up this whole conversation, like I, you know, if you can travel or go, do something independently or alone, I highly, highly recommend it. I highly suggest it. And the importance of going alone is because not only do you get to be with yourself and your thoughts and just, you know, do what you want to do, but like when someone's with you, whether you are subconscious doing this, you know, on purpose or subconsciously, like you are kind of worried about like what they want to do for, with the day or like how they're feeling or where they're going or like, if the kids are coming, if everyone's fed or it's constant oh. outside distraction. Um, if you can travel alone, do. Um, clearly keep your what's about you, but you're going to be okay. You know, you'll, you're safe. You're going to be all right. And just take time off, actual time off for yourself. It's more important than we know. We're in such a hustle culture. We're especially entrepreneurs. We're in such a grind constantly all the time, doing the thing, doing the thing, doing the thing. Like also as important as that is, it is as important to disconnect and to refocus your energy on yourself and different things. Thank you folks for joining us on No Holds Barred. We're so happy that you had the time to sit down and listen to our chat, listen about the importance of disconnecting, listen about the importance of just, you know, being able to refocus yourself, refocus your energy. And, you know, sometimes traveling alone might be a new and exciting thing for you. It's, it's not something that we should be afraid of. Remember what you put in your mind as a fear, that's how it starts becoming reality. Put, put courage in your mind. Put something else in your mind. Put the good stuff that you want. With that, I'll have to say for me and Candace, thank you guys for joining us. Be sure to like and subscribe. I want to see some comments down below. I want to see any questions you guys have or if you guys want us to talk about something, please let us know. And until next time, thank you for joining us on No Holds Barred.